for attending the meeting tonight, uh, the campaign for justice for Craig Aventoe, Brandon McConville and John Paul Whitten. I think it's really important that communities get involved in miscarriages of justice and highlight what uh, the state have been doing. I first became involved uh, in the campaign for the Craig Aventoe when I was asked to attend one of their early meetings by one of the solicitors involved in the case. And I received a letter from Eileen McConville, the mother of Brandon. And I can only presume it was like one of the first letters my mother wrote on behalf of us when we were wrongfully imprisoned, trying to gather support and get people interested in the case. And I went to the meeting and was shocked by what I heard. I read the depositions and, and read the uh, the case papers from the court hearing and it was appalling that two men could be sentenced to life imprisonment for the murder of a policeman on so little evidence, so little fact. Uh, when you read the case papers you cannot help be, but be struck by the inconsistencies of it all and by the the shadowy hand of secret services involved, knowing that a tracking device had been placed in John Paul Wooden's car, and when arrested, the tracking device had been retrieved, and wherever it was taken, it was tampered with, and yet was still allowed to be uh, introduced as credible evidence in their trial, without any sort of uh, investigation as to who had tampered with it. And then you come to witness M. Um, uh, it justifies belief that someone, 11 months after the arrest of Brenton and John Paul, calls up in, a, in a, an inebriated state and says that he has information about the murder of the policeman, who is then becomes the main plank of evidence that's being used against him. And we've seen that this man, this witness, um, his evidence has now become discredited that his own family have come forward and said that he is nothing more than a Walter Mitty, has disputed his version of the native events. 
and it's accumulated uh, with the April appeal being put back with the headlines. Sabotage. You know, this is just one of a number of high profile cases that, uh, that warrant investigation, that needs to be scrutinised. And, and when you have such a succession of high profile cases failing, the uh, Sean Hoy case at Oma, the Robert McCartney case, uh, the Loyalist Supergrass trial, when you've had all these cases, these high profile cases, come along and all fail and have all been rigorously pursued by the police, the judiciary and the media, sooner or later a high profile case has to succeed. And in this case I am absolutely certain that there's been a terrible miscarriage of justice, that Brendan McConville's innocent, that John Paul Wooden's innocent and that what has been done to them, if it is a forerunner for a judicial system that, that is under scrutiny and under pressure, then we are all under pressure. We are all under scrutiny and we could all fall victim to the same kind of injustice that these two guys have fallen under. Uh, I've no doubt that if justice does prevail, that come the appeal in October, we will have John Paul Whitten and Brent McConville walking free as innocent men from, from the court but they'll have lost a huge chunk of their life. Their families will have went through extreme stress and trauma and their lives will never be the same. Any judicial system is one of the cornerstones, one of the foundations of any society and we all have to buy into it if it's credible. If it's not credible it means democracy is not working and it can't work in order to save something it has to work because it's credible, it's impartial, it's transparent and it works for everyone and everyone receives the same level of and standard of justice that we expect from any judicial society, any judicial institution that operates within our name. So I would appeal to everyone here tonight to be aware of what's happening, to not be frightened to support and come out and voice your opinion and your support for people who are being detained under secret information. This is the same type of information that's being used in Iraq and Iran and Iran and, and of course in Guantanamo Bay. Uh, I'm involved in the campaign to try and free the lost British resident Shakarama who's being detained at, uh, by the Americans in Guantanamo although has been cleared for release and still hasn't been released. This is no different from the sacred evidence that was used against Marion Price, the sacred evidence that's been used against Martin Corey, and the sacred evidence that's being used, it seems, on a, on a basis here that's far too frequent for comfort. So once again, I would appeal to everyone to stand up, to support, and to voice your opposition and concern about what's being done in our name. Because if it is being done in our name and we don't voice our opposition and our uh, anger against it, then it's tactical support for people being interned by Roman. Thank you very much.